Hi, this is Pastor Rob Wynn from Cornerstone Church in Lyndon, Alabama. I want to welcome you to Back Porch Wisdom today. And last week we were talking about you have a choice. You have a choice whether you uh, get born again, serve God. You got a choice whether you get healed bodily. Uh, you get a choice of whether you uh, prosper financially. You have a choice of whether or not you uh, live in peace of mind. Uh, the sermon today is going to be... Uh, Lose it to keep it. So there's a verse in uh, Luke 17. It says, All who are obsessed with being secure in life will lose it all, including their life. But those who let go of their lives and surrender them to me will discover true life. And uh, a missionary from Ecuador said this, is it worth it? He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain which he cannot lose. See, it's important that you understand that human life is temporary. And eternal life, whether it's uh, living with God in heaven or uh, you live with the devil in hell, you're an eternal being. But human life, people struggle to prosper uh, all the time, and uh, human life is short. Uh, in the scan scheme of God's terms, human life is only about a little over two hours, maybe. For most people, it's under two hours, and so it's real temporary. And you find in uh, James 1, verse 10, it says, but the rich person's pride should be in his humiliation because he will pass away like a uh, wildflower in the meadow. For the sun rises with its heat and dries up the meadow. The petal of the flower falls off and its beauty is lost forever. So also the rich person in the midst of his pursuits will wither away. Well, you know, there's people that don't have much of anything that are in per pursuit of money and, and riches in this life. And uh, it's all going to pass away. Uh, eventually, you're going to die. You could just lose it in the stock market. Uh, you could have somebody like Bernie Madoff steal it from you. Uh, you could have uh, your house burned down. You could have a hurricane uh, take it out. You could have a tornado take out your possession of your house and all your goods. And so we see that it's real temporary. And so we, won't, we don't want to focus on human life. We want to focus on what is more noteworthy. Now, what does it cost you to chase the wrong thing? Well, you can kind of go down the list. It costs you your time that you could be spending with your relative, for instance, your wife or your husband, your child, or uh, a good friend. So time's uh, expensive. Uh, if you waste it, you'll never get it back again. And so make sure every day, that, like the Bible says, you redeem the time for the day is evil. I mean, you could lose that valuable time. You could lose those valuable relationships. Uh, you could use. You could lose your health. Man, I've seen a many a person that just worked themselves into the grave. They never took any time off. They never really enjoyed uh, the journey. You know, a journey is actually a day, and I don't really understand that because. I like to be around my family. I like to be around friends. I like to make more friends. Um, I like to enjoy the fruits of my labor, so to speak. But if you're not serving God, you're lo using a lot, losing a lot. You're losing eternal life. Uh, you're losing uh, prosperity in health and uh, peace of mind. You are losing so much that you could have. You're losing all the blessings of uh, being a Christian, which uh, God has 
there are all these hazes in the Bible. And you can certainly have what God has already paid for you. It says in Romans 8, verse 2, it says, The Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. Man, isn't that that's good news to people who are uh, dying because they don't have to die. Today, today I went to the doctor. I had uh, my six-month checkup to make sure that cat cancer hadn't come back to my bladder. And uh, I've been cancer-free since February the uh, 2019 when uh, Dr. Uh, Greg Broughton uh, took it out of my body. And so he was just checking again. So I'm still cancer-free. Praise God. But when you're not following God, anything that's not a faith is sin. We narrowed it down to real uh, small issue. And so... Uh, a pastor friend of mine, uh, Pastor B.J. Watts, said it this way one time. I believe this was B.J. It says, sin will take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you wanted to stay, and cost you more than you wanted to pay. So uh, you don't, in chasing the wrong thing, you lose a lot of good things. What could you possibly gain? Well, you could possibly gain rich, close relationships. You know, uh, the relationship in between a pastor or a church and a member uh, is something you could really lose because you, you find people now that they're not going to church and they say, well, we've just grown apart. As a pastor over the last 30 years, uh, People say, well, we just grew apart. Well, you grew apart because you didn't pay attention to one another. And so it's important that you pay attention to each other. And so, but here's one of the greatest things you, you lose. When Jesus was dealing with the rich young ruler, he said, well, I've done this, I've done that, I've done all the rules, and what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? Well, he, he uh, told him, and he turned his back and went away. And Jesus said, you know, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle uh, than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. And his disciples were astounded uh, because they weren't poor people. And uh, Jesus answered them and said, because uh, they said, who can be saved? Well, it's not only who can be saved, who can be wealthy, who can be uh, healed, who, who can have peace of mind. And Jesus said, the, this is impossible for mere humans, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Uh, and he began to look around at all the people, and he said, I tell you the truth. There's no one who has left home or brother or sister or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive in this life a hundred times as much let me repeat that as a hundred times as much as you give up homes brothers sisters mothers children fields uh, it's all with persecution because because if you're living right you're going to get persecuted by people who don't live right and in this age to come, eternal life. Well, he was talking about when he had paid the redemptive price. And the redemptive price has been paid. So we, we get born again. We're a child of God. We get closeness with God. And then God, uh, through his promises, by his stripes, we are healed. And then you find that Jesus was made poor so that we might be made rich. He, uh, he suffered uh, pain in his thoughts because he, he said on the cross, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And so Jesus paid for those things for you and I. Well, the question is, how can we gain all this back? And Jesus said, uh, to people, the throngs that are around him with his disciples, and said to them, if anyone intends to come after me, 
let him deny himself. In other words, forget about himself, ignore himself in some, some form, and disown himself in some form, and lose sight of himself in some form, and his own interest. Well, that's the key one. And take up his cross and join me as a disciple, a learner, and siding with me in my party, follow with me continually, cleaving steadfast to me. For whoever wants to save his higher spiritual eternal life will lose it, the lower natural temporal life, which is lived only on this earth. And whoever gives up his life, which is lived only on earth for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save his higher spiritual life and the eternal life which he said you will gain natural things on this earth a hundredfold i don't know about you but i can count and so what do you need to do number one you need to retire from your hurt human effort and be like jesus uh never want to be uh independent from God and think of yourself as having no ability in what you do, what you see, what you, what you, how you judge things, how you make decisions, and who teaches you. And then withdraw from your own way. There's a way of life or customs that we all have and you need to withdraw from them and make them small and, and pe uh, Paul said he counted them all like dung to win Christ. And then number three, but not least, yield to God. Be somebody that goes to church and hears the true gospel about uh, being born again, uh, being physically healed, uh, how to walk in faith, how to serve God honorably, how to possess your own body in holiness and righteousness and in sanctification, and uh, how to follow God's Spirit. So I don't know about you, but I want to retire from myself. I want to withdraw from my own ways, and I am doing my best to yield unto God. Well, in 2022, I hope you have a prosperous and blessed new year. And if anybody's not born again, let's pray. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus is Lord and that you raised him from the dead so that I could be your child. I am so in Jesus' name. Well, go on YouTube, Robert Wynn, W-Y-N-N-E, -N -N -E, and on uh, the internet, Cornerstone Church, the number four, the letter U.com. God bless you and have a great day.